Hi folks, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at Callmarker's new Titan 1 JPT MOPA fiber laser engraver. Like a standard fiber laser, this machine is designed for marking and engraving all metals and some plastics, stone, and leather, but unlike a standard fiber laser, it gives you precise control of the laser pulse width with an adjustment range of 2 nanoseconds up to 500 nanoseconds, and a frequency range from 0 to 4000 kHz, which allows you to produce a much wider range of colors and effects with better consistency. The machine that I'm setting up in this video is rated for 100 watts, but it's also available in 60 watt and 200 watt power options, and it can engrave at speeds of up to 15,000 millimeters per second depending on your material choice and other settings, with an accuracy down to 0.01 millimeters to capture fine details in high resolution images. It has both a manual and electric lift for quick and precise focal adjustment to your materials and forced air cooling through the control box which allows the machine to work continuously for 24 hours straight with a max service life of up to 100,000 hours. It also comes with a 110mm lens for engraving fine details in a small work area and a 200mm lens to increase the work area at the expense of some image resolution. A 300mm lens is also available to purchase separately if needed. A foot pedal switch for batch processing is included as well, and it's also compatible with rotary engraving with Callmarker's Chuck Rotaries which are sold separately. After turning it on, I connected it to Lightburn software on my PC with the provided USB cable and set it up in the Devices Wizard by clicking the Create Manually button, then selecting JCZ Fiber from the list. Next I imported the configuration file that's provided on the USB drive that comes with the machine, then I named it, clicked finish, and then checked the port and console to make sure the machine was connected. Then I opened the device settings to load the core file from the USB drive and checked the other settings to make sure they were correct before setting up a piece of stainless steel for the first test and adjusting the focal distance, which is unique for every machine and will be written on the side of the enclosure and in the user manual. With the focal distance set, I open the material test tool and set up a test grid for marking with different settings. Then I click the frame button to frame the work area and position the steel sheet accordingly before clicking start. The material test tool is great for figuring out what settings are best to create the marking or engraving effect that you want. You can create test grids comparing speed versus power, frequency, pulse width, or hatch. This grid is just a small fraction of the settings that you can choose from to create thousands of colors and shades. Next, I mark the same grid onto a piece of brass and aluminum. Next, I set up my logo in Lightburn with different settings to create different colors for different parts on aluminum and brass.
Most of these tests are showing various shades of brown and gray, so to give a better example of what sort of colors you can create, I marked this image of Mickey from the Steamboat Willie cartoon onto a piece of stainless steel. Next, I mark the same logo onto a zinc coin, a piece of black acrylic, and a leather wallet. Here I'm 2.5D engraving the logo into a coin. Of course, it can also 3D engrave using grayscale depth map images. Here I'm marking a high resolution image onto an aluminum card.
Next, I 3D engraved a fossil into a piece of sandstone. This turned out okay, but you can see it's pretty grainy. It works a lot better on slate. This was a last minute decision, and I didn't have the right steel to do it properly, but I wanted to show off its cutting power by cutting out a custom box cutter blank with it. To start, I set up the blade profile in Lightburn, and used the offset tool to create an outline spaced 1.5mm away from it. Then I set these to fill mode, so instead of cutting one thin line, it'll cut a 1.5mm wide line similar to deep engraving straight through the material. This allows it to concentrate more power and heat for better cutting performance, and provides space for debris to be blown away with a fan, which I recommend using along with some sort of fume and dust control, because it will fill the air in your workshop, and the last thing that you want to be breathing is fine metal particulates. As I mentioned, I'm just using some 2mm thick 304 stainless steel that I had on hand, which is not ideal for any sort of blade because it can't be heat treated properly and it won't hold an edge for long, but it'll work fine for this demonstration. 1084 carbon steel or tool steel are much better choices for knife blades. This took around 3 hours to cut, which isn't very fast given that I could have done this by hand in about an hour, but it's not like I had to stand there and watch it either. I put some of that time to better use by drawing up some scales to cut from brass, and 3D printed a sheath for the blade. A person could also use the laser to just mark the blank on the steel and cut it out by hand instead of using paper templates. Some things definitely would be faster to cut that way, but a laser would save some time and frustration with more complicated designs. Since it can't be heat treated, all I did was clean the edges, beveled the blade, drilled some holes, roughed up the inside faces of the brass scales with sandpaper, and cleaned them with alcohol before gluing them onto the blank with two-part epoxy. Thinking that it would save some time, I didn't bother installing pins for this either, and things ended up a bit misaligned, but it turned out okay with a bit of extra Dremel work in the end. I also used a carbide bit in my trim router to chamfer the edges before sanding it all down to a satin finish, starting with 200 grit sandpaper and ending with 600 grit. Finally, I engraved my name on the blade and a maple leaf on the handle because I am a proud Canadian and always will be. So that's it for this video folks. For what it is, I think the box cutter turned out nice. It's too bad that I didn't have the right steel for it, but maybe I'll order some and make a more detailed video in the future on making another one properly. But so far I'm impressed with the engraver. Like all of Callmarker's machines, it's been working great. I haven't had a chance to test a rotary with it yet, but I'm sure it won't be a problem. I'll record a video on that when the time comes. Until then, let me know what you think of it, and if you're interested in getting one, then check out the link in the video description. Thanks for watching and take care folks.